Hi, my name is Micah. I'm with Vexu Cyber at Iowa State University. I'm Dylan. I'm also with Vexu Cyber at Iowa State University. I'm Ali, and I'm also on the Vexu Cyber Robotics team at Iowa State. I'm Calvin. I'm from Vexu uh, Cyber Robotics, Iowa State. Uh, I'm Chris. I'm from 8110S, and this is a Mark Rob Robot in 24 hour explanation video. This is our drivetrain. So we started with a 450, 2.75-inch uh, drivetrain, uh, inch wheel drivetrain. Um, we chose smaller wheel, wheels to save more space since we have such a large bot and we need to carry as many balls as possible. Um, with the wheel placement, we tried to create a good distance between the front wheels and the back wheel um, to make parking easier, um, especially with the center of gravity with our motors. and. Um, if we were to redo this again, we would probably uh, go with larger wheels to get over the barrier easier, and then as well, um, go with lower wattage uh, to give more motors to the rest of the bot. I'm gonna be showing off our innovative first stage roller system. We wanted something that was a static mounted roller. So a rubber band roller was ideal because you have the compression form from the intake in the roller rather than doing floating style intake. So that compression comes with the rubber bands. But one challenge we faced was getting match loads from the match loader. The axle conflicts with uh, taking in those match loads. So then Prith suggested, what if we just had no axle at all? And the Prith roller was born. So the idea is that we could just go up to the goal here, or the match loader here and intake and it'll pull them in and because there's no there's no axle in there when the motor is running at full speed uh the axle won't conflict so we'll be able to pull out one ball while pulling the next one down and forward and you'll never run into troubles with the ball running into the axle and it can just go straight into the robot Another huge benefit of this intake is it's, it's very wide and that allows for uh, more, better drivability. If you're navigating across the field and you can't see the front of your robot, obviously visibility is a lot worse with this type of robot. But with any type, just having a wider intake is going to make it easier to drive and pick up multiple of those blocks at one time. Um, as well is that this, this doesn't have any polycarbonate uh, allowing you to use uh, that polycarbonate in other places on your robot that may be more key for the V5RC teams. But, uh, and overall, this is a no polycarb, no pneumatic robot, uh, just trying to optimize for simplicity. But, yeah, this, this roller, allowing it to go for that match loader and on field alike, really optimizes for peak gameplay. I don't know. <laughs> A primary goal was to be able to score and uh, hoard a bunch of balls and uh, we uh, did that by having three different motors on the intake and depending on the spin they, this would result in the ball going out of here up here or out of here um, and that just allowed for uh, a lot of flexibility um some of the issues we uh, came into with this was uh, with the funneling uh, it would hit the gears and the gears were, were our funnels so it wasn't great and and with the first stage here the, the force of the bands caused a lot of friction in the screw joints so so then uh, we had to spam like uh, eight washers on either side to get it to spin freely if we had to do this again we, we would uh, allocate more wattage to the intake because uh, we uh, wanted even more degrees of freedom we were not able to provide it as well as better funneling and and uh, maybe better uh, uh, rod arbor band holders so another thing about our motor allocation was that these had to be chained together the top and bottom rollers but they're cross chained which makes them spin opposite ways which help this robot function, but ideally they would be independently powered and that would, that would work a lot, a lot better if they were.
but that's just another reason for, you know, for this style of robot, having a lot of motors on the intake, whether they're 5.5 or 11 watts. <laughs> So this is our hopper. Um, this is where all of the balls will funnel into. So at the start of the game, we want it to be um, very compact in the 18 by 18 cube. Um, but then after the game begins, we want that to expand to, to 22 um, by 22 inches, which is the expected um, game manual change. We, uh, we were able to expand this by doing these sort of like L brackets on the side that just gave us the max amount of volume for the hopper. We also wanted to make this expansion at the beginning passive, um, so there was no other moving parts on um, this mechanism. So there's two rubber bands at the points of these hinges that will uh, strap around to um, a set of sprockets on on the intake, and then when the when the robot starts, those rubber bands just fly off and this is able to expand. This needed a little bit of help to expand. It wasn't a super easy and swift motion. So uh, we added bands on the hinges to help that release as well as, there we go, as well as banding on the bottom to help this, uh, this back plate uh, fall out. So overall, we built this robot in 24 hours. Our goal was to give a good starting example for a hopper mechanism robot. Uh, some of the biggest issues were, like we said, the motor allocation. Uh, we would have preferred to, after doing this, to allocate some more motors to the index or an intake rather than our drivetrain to be able to score on all the different levels of the field or of the goals. Uh, also, we didn't use any polycarbonate or pneumatics, so it gives teams a uh, a lot of for, to, or freedom to kind of make this their own and make many modifications and improvements to what this is. Uh, we will not be competing with this robot. It was a prototype that we did in the 24 hours. That's why we have a lot of extra pieces because uh, we are going to be taking it apart soon. And the Prith roller uh, we think is a very interesting part of this because it does not require you to expand to score or to get balls from the match loaders but rather you have that room to expand in other parts of the robot, which many other robot designs do not allow for.